So what we're going to try to do is do graphing hyperbola from what standard form. Shh, quite down, please. Thank you. It's okay. Yeah, but it's also flight. Okay. So um, what we're doing, um, try to graph this one. It's not in standard form. The first thing you need to recognize, it's not in the correct form. Again, coming back to the parabola homework recently, some people forgot to put it in the right form before finding the foci point. It was not, they didn't know how, they just didn't recognize it wasn't in the right form. Please recognize we need to divide by 36 on this problem to get it in the right form. Divide by 36 to get it in the right form. Okay, now nine's canceled here. Okay, nine canceled with the nine and the 36, and that leaves x squared over four. Four cancels leaves a nine. I got a minus y squared over nine equal to one. First thing you want to recognize, this is not in the book, and if it is in the book, it says it much differently. There's an easy way, a sensible way, to recognize which direction the hyperbola is going. Hyperbolas will go, for the most part, left and right, horizontally, or they will go vertically. They'll go vertically, like that. So you need to recognize that. X squared or Y squared, which one's positive? X, X is. The X squared is positive. That means we're going in the X squared direction. Does that beat any formula or any long paragraph that the book will use to explain it? Make it simple. If x squared is positive, we're going in the x direction. Always make a box. Always make a box to start. So the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is get the center and make the box. Now, what I like to do is after I find the center is 0, 0, and again, that is a what makes that is a what makes zero, literally. What makes zero out of these? Zero. Yeah, zero, zero. So that's my center. The box is, has a displacement in the horizontal, just like the ellipse. Underneath the four, go two out. Go two out. Underneath the y, go square root of it. Vertically, displace three out from the middle. Displace three out from the middle. So it has the same kind of footprint, the same starter as ellipse does. Then, from here, make a box that would go around, circumscribe the ellipse. So does everybody see the ellipse would be right in this area? Okay, so I'm going to make a box that boxes that area in. This is the best way. This is where one of the other YouTube videos out there that him, uh, the person, the teacher and I have to call. I've seen other, other YouTube videos and other educational videos where they don't make the box, and I find it a little harder to do. Okay. All right, real simple, make the asymptotes. Make the asymptotes. The asymptotes, asymptotes are going to be from, from the corner to corner on the box. Corner to corner on the box. They will go through, they will go through the center as well. So you have three collinear points, three collinear points. What's the slope of the positive line here? Should be pretty obvious because we just went through a change of y, change of x. Y. Yep. So this is a 3 over 2 x line. It's good to label it. The other one's got to be the same thing, except it's down 3 over 2, right? Negative 3 over 2. So now you actually have the equation of the asymptotes. The asymptotes go through the diagonal of the box you make. They'll hit the center and the vertices of the corners of the box. Perfect. Okay, so that's how you make that. <clears throat> next, next, let's talk and please, almost done. Next, we need to graph the actual, we're going to graph the actual um, curve here. And so the actual curve here, I'm trying to find a different color here, starts, this is where everybody messes up. You need to start on the box. The box holds the vertices. The box holds the vertices. Here's the actual graph. The, the vertices are already obvious. They're the displacement out. Key to remember. The, no, because x squared is positive, I'm going to go in the x direction. That's why. X is horizontal always in our world, so I'm hoping that's consistent and I'm not creating something new. I mean, the reason I come up with these phrases like under x squared and under y squared is I feel it's connecting to something you know. Last, everybody look up here. You, you, look up. See the triangle that the box makes? It's a pretty obvious triangle. See that triangle? Okay, see this length right here that goes to the corner? 
Watch it drop down as if it fell down or on a radius of a circle. Do you see how it would be perfect length to a foci point? Remember the foci points on the inside of the curve. So the foci points have to be somewhere over here on the inside. If you look at the hypotenuse of that box, that right triangle box, that is the length of the foci. You can actually visually see it drop down and be that length. Do we know the other two lengths? Four, three, Pythagoras says this is five. That foci length is five. Oh, no, I did it wrong. Oh, shoot, I did it wrong. Sorry, that's two mistakes today, huh? Erase that part. Cool, so it's three down and two across. So what is that? Nine to root 13. Is that root 13? So this point is at root 13 comma zero. Okay, it started, the center started at zero. So that's where that point is. It's at root 13 comma zero. And obviously over here, we're gonna have negative root 13 comma zero for that focus point. So there's the two focus points. Remember the vertex is on the box. You gotta, people draw the vertex in many different places. The vertex is on the box. You guys have a great day. Peace.